visualizations are powerful learning tools. Now, I'm not talking about visualizing your future or something like that. I'm talking about literal visualizations, like drawing something on a piece of paper. These are visualizations. But these visualizations are oriented towards communication, trying to display data or display ideas in a way to make others understand them. What I'm talking about is visualizations that you use on your own to help you understand something more deeply. There are three major benefits to doing this. The first is that it gets stuff out of your head and onto something that you can analyze. So if you haven't visualized something, or if you haven't written something down, your brain has to do both of the remembering and the manipulating and the imagining and the analysis and the thinking and the reflection. By putting something on paper or on a computer, you release your brain from having to kind of play both roles at once. And what you've done is to create an object that you can analyze and think about. But visualizations in particular help you to specify things that you might not otherwise specify when you're just using words. The reason is that you have to make decisions about where to put things in the visualization. You could say something that's ambiguous, like the red triangle is next to the green square. But what next to means might mean any one of these visualization. By using a visualization, you have to make decisions that you don't have to make when you're just talking about something. Visualizations also help you to see structure in what you are learning about or thinking about. I have these cards. I can put these cards in order of smallest country to largest country in terms of population. I can also put these cards in terms of smallest land area to largest land area. In both cases, I'm seeing at least some structure, but I could combine these axes and now I can get a sense of which countries are most dense and which countries are least dense. So now I'm starting to see structure that probably was not apparent beforehand. What should you draw visualizations of? You might draw visualizations of processes, of arguments, of timelines, of maps, of relationships of causes and effect. You want to use a tool that lets you rapidly create something and leaves you open to easily changing the form of the visualization. Whiteboard applications are great for this. I also have found presentation software to be relatively adaptable in this. Post-it notes are always a popular choice. I also just like using pen and paper even though I can't draw at all because it lets me quickly sketch out an idea that then I can more easily flesh out. You also don't want to commit to a visual form beforehand. Part of the whole idea is to use visualizations to explore different kinds of relationships. Now you might know about line graphs and bar graphs and timelines, but the visualization that will help you to understand something more deeply might not be either of those. It might be something that combines elements from the visual forms that you already know. For instance, this was a visualization that I created a long time ago in grad school about an experiment that I was running. The x-axis is time, and the circles represent when a problem solver solved a certain kind of problem. The two lines of dots, each line represents a condition, and the colors here, the matching colors, represents the same problem that people saw. And the x's represent that someone didn't come to the right Conclusion. Now this is not a line graph or a bar graph or any of the kind of canonical visualizations that you might think of, but it helped me to understand which data points fit my hypotheses and which data points did not. Visualizing, especially visualizing data, is a really important skill that crosses all different kinds of professions and areas of expertise. For more about this skill and the benefits that it offers, check out this video.